Hello everybody out there, my name is Jason Norton, I'm the pastor here at King's Trail Cowboy Church. I want to welcome you to the sermon section, this is the intro. We're putting a lot of work into this intro, so we pray it works. But uh, what I'm reminded of is Jesus' words. Jesus at one time in the gospel says, uh, let these words sink deep down inside you. So before you listen to God's word, this message, I pray that you get your mind right. You maybe even say a little prayer saying, you know, Lord, help your word sink deep down in me. And speaking of God's word, here's a scripture that was laid on my heart uh, pertaining to this intro. It's Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 29. It says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Many of us come to the Lord um, desiring to have rest and comfort, but we also sometimes forget, he says, learn from me. So that's the purpose of this sermon section, is that we all can come to a spot and listen to a message out of God's Word, and we can learn from Christ Jesus, and it will bless us, and it won't just bless us, it will bless our entire lives. So I pray um, that you enjoy this message, and I'll see you at the end of it. In Jesus' name, bye-bye. Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Did y'all come sliding in on two wheels? Now, most of y'all know I'm from Ohio, and I learned to drive in December. So I tend to laugh at y'all when y'all start to drive in this down here. <laughs> it's all right. I've spun off the road of my time or two in my day, too, so... So who wants to be different today? Who wants to be changed? Amen. What better time of year to be changed, to be different than New Year's? To see 2017 go out, 2018 to come in, to change something. To change a part of your life that you've been wanting to change or been trying to change and just haven't found the, the willpower or the strength you haven't found that, that new motivation. Well, most everybody, a lot of folks you know, you may do this, make New Year's resolutions. Who does that? Anybody make New Year's resolutions out there? No? A couple of y'all? Well, I pray and hope that at least if you're not making New Year's resolutions, that you make new goals. We don't make New Year's resolutions. But my wife and I have talked, and uh, we're going to sit down over the next few days, and we're going to set new goals things that we can work towards. I believe New Year's resolutions are thoughts and ideas that, that you want to make a change in your life towards and things that you want to do. But as almost everybody knows, if you've ever done a New Year's resolution, uh, they don't usually last. How many of you out there over the years past have uh, decided you want to eat better this next year? And then mid-January, or maybe you made it to February, and you're stopping by Whataburger and getting the big old double cheeseburger again for lunch. Or you've decided you want to get in better shape, so you joined the gym. We have one in Trenton, by the way. <laughs> if anybody's looking to join one. We, uh, but time, life gets in the way. You struggle getting there. Or you decide you can't do it, and you end up quitting and dropping off of that. So New Year's resolutions, I don't believe, work. Goals, however, work. If you set things in your life and accomplishments that you want to do, I believe that you can reach them. The key is setting a goal that is very obtainable. It's always good to have a long-term goal, but to have short-term goals, too. Because once you reach that short-term goal, there's nothing like a feel of victory when a short-term goal is met. Several years ago, when I first started working out, my, one of my goals was to get to do a pull-up because I hadn't been able to do a pull-up since high school. And as time went by and I worked towards it and I gained the strength that I needed and the mobility that I needed to be able to do it, I can do 15, 20 in a row now without a problem. But... Goals are good to set because if you don't reach a goal, 
then what are we going towards? What are we working towards or what are we headed towards? Are we just going to float through life just doing whatever we want to do when we want to do it? Sounds fun, doesn't it? For many years, that's the way I lived my life. I did what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it with no thought to anything or anyone else. But you're here today, so it leads me to believe that hopefully you're living towards a greater power. You believe in something greater than yourself, and you're putting something above your own thoughts or desires. I pray that that's Jesus Christ. So our goal in 2018, I believe, should be to grow closer to Christ, plain and simple. To make a change in our day-to-day lives that is going to get us to that goal. What is something that you can change? I'm willing to bet that every one of us in here could put down the electronics, our cell phones, social media, a little more often, maybe pick up our Bible. Or if you're reaching for your phone, instead of opening up a social media app, open up the Bible app. I'm just as guilty. Randy and I harass each other all the time about getting our heads out of our phones. Then she went and made it easier for me and got me a smartwatch. So now I can get my head out of my phone. But we all need to change something in 2018. We need to change something in our lives that's going to draw us closer to Christ, that's going to make us more Christ-like. If you claim to be a Christian sitting in here today, to be a Christian means to be Christ-like. So what's something that you can change that's going to make you more like Christ? If you're in here today and you don't know Christ, or you've walked away from Him for some time and, and He hasn't been important in your life, and you're ready to come back, parable of the prodigal son. He's going to be there waiting with open arms for you. Whether you've ran and you knew him once before, or maybe you've never known him your entire life. And maybe there's something that's going on in your life that's changed, that's got you looking for something different. That last song they just sang, I want to be different. So many people nowadays are living to be just like everybody else. They're living to fit in, to blend in. They don't want to be noticed and don't want to be seen. So we tailor our clothes around the people we hang out with. We tailor our attitudes to be like the people that we we hang out with. The problem with that is sometimes the people we're hanging out with aren't the right people. Sometimes we have to make a drastic change in our lives. To become something that's better, something that we want to be, something that's different. Somebody that, we're, that makes us better than who we were yesterday or last year. To start off a brand new year looking for a brand new change, I believe is important for each and every one of us in here today. To find something that's going to make us a better human, a better wife, a better husband a better father, a brother, sister, a better co-worker, to follow through on the things we say we're going to do, to shine Jesus' light a little bit brighter and a little bit stronger than we did last year. If you're a Christian... 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. If you honestly believe that, I do. I pray if you're a Christian, you do too. Then that old man or old woman that we used to be is dead and gone. Let that person remain buried. The symbol of baptism, to die, to be reborn. Leave that old man or woman in that water. 
leave that old man or that old woman at the feet of Jesus and be who Jesus wants you to be. Make the change. Be different. Stand out. Don't look like everybody else unless they're acting like Jesus. He's the one person out there that we need to act like. The one person we need to imitate. So many people are trying to be like a role model that they had. Maybe it was your father growing up and you want to be like your dad. Maybe it's a, a singer or a star that you see on TV or the movies. You want to be like that person or maybe it's that character that they portrayed in the movie. The problem with that is as human beings, we're going to fail. No role, no role model is perfect unless it's Jesus. No role model will get you where you want to go unless it's Jesus. We need to make a change in our lives and a difference in our lives to be more like Jesus. But change can be scary. Fear can cause a multitude of things. Some things that we're afraid of, we'll run from. Some things that we're afraid of might draw us closer to what we need to, where we need to be. Some people are afraid of dying. Some are afraid of getting sick. Some are fearful because they don't know what's coming in the new year financially. Maybe they've lost a job or they've lost a home. But when we take that fear that we face from our own physical emotion that we come up with and we lay that fear at the feet of the Jesus, the feet of the cross, and allow Jesus to carry that fear for us, we can go so much farther and we can draw so much closer and so much quicker to Him. In 2 Timothy, it says the Lord did not create a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. We need to pull on those spirits, pull on that power that we draw from the cross, the power that we draw from Christ himself, and the strength from the Holy Spirit that he'll give us to push through. That scripture is one of the first scriptures that we teach our kids. Kids have a tendency to be afraid of the dark. Some adults are afraid of the dark. So what are you afraid of that you don't want to face in 2018? What did you run from in 2017 that you need to run towards in 2018? What's that one thing, no matter how small or how big, that you need to change that we can work towards? Ask the Lord to give you the wisdom and the strength, the courage to make that change. To set that goal that makes a huge difference in your life. Do you want to end 2018 the same way you ended 2019 or 2017? Anybody? We should always want to end the next year stronger, better, more confident in the Lord than we started it. We should want to end that year in a better place, whether it's financially, emotionally, physically. The only way to do that is to change. They say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. But how often do we fall into that rut? How often do we fall into the, the same old pattern because the same old routine because it's what we've always done? Yet in the back of our minds, we all want to change. We all want a little padding in our bank accounts. We all want to be a little more kind to those around us. We want to be a better friend. We should all strive to be a better husband, a better wife, and most definitely better parents. Because none of us are perfect. We all fail and fall and stumble. 
But what we do with that when we stumble and fall is the difference. It's what makes us stronger. Are you going to fall down? Are you going to lay down? Are you going to wallow in your pity, in your misery? Are you going to stay down and and let this world and Satan kick you around? Are you going to get back up with the strength of Jesus Christ? Are you going to fight? Fight to make that change that the Lord's been calling you to make, but you've been scared. Are you going to stand and fight to make that change that, that He wants you to make? A lot of times we plan our own paths. We plan, plan our steps and what we want in our lives. And I pray that when we set our goals this year, that the goals we set are the ones the Lord wants for us. And I pray that we have the courage to follow through and walk through them no matter how scary they are. I'm a big picture kind of guy. I kind of want to know what's going to happen. I want to know the ending. I want to know what's going to happen when we make a decision. But sometimes that's not the way the Lord works. When Saul was on the road to Damascus and Jesus spoke to him, And converted him into Paul. What did he tell him to do? He told him to go to the street named Straight and wait. For a man named Ananias would come to him. He didn't know what was going to happen. Then he went to Ananias and he told him to go see Paul. Or go see Saul. Ananias argued with him. Because he didn't want to go. Because he was scared. Because he had heard the stories of Saul that persecuted Christians, that killed and murdered him. So he didn't want to go, so he argued, because he was afraid. But the Lord told him to go, and he was obedient, and he went. And because each one of them was obedient to what the Lord told them, look what Paul accomplished in the name of Jesus Christ. What could you accomplish in the name of Jesus Christ if you're, you follow through with what the Lord's telling you to do? Could you be the next Paul? The next Timothy? The next Mary? Could be sitting in this room right now, but has been scared to move. Well, my prayer today for you and for the 2018, for this entire congregation, for myself, my family, and for each one of us, is that we're no longer fearful. We're no longer afraid. And when the Lord tells us to move, we move. When the Lord tells us to go, we go. No matter where it is, no matter what it is, pull from His strength, not our own. Some of us are stronger than others. Reach out to your brothers and sisters that are hurting. Reach out to your brothers and sisters that are in need. The word says that he will know we the world will know that we're his disciples by the way we love one another. Who do you know that's that's beside you or behind you, or a coworker, or a family member, a friend that's hurting, that needs some extra love today? Reach out and show the love of Christ. No longer be fearful for what others may think of you. Y'all have seen me up here enough to know that I'm a crybaby. And I don't care anymore. I spent years and never shed a tear. But I don't care anymore. That emotion no longer scares me. And I pray that you find something that's been scaring you. And you take it to the Lord and you ask Him to give you the strength and the courage to no longer be afraid. To no longer be fearful of it. To fight through the emotion. To fight through the thoughts that Satan's trying to plant in your head telling you that you can't do it. Telling that you're not smart enough or strong enough. We all need to make a change for 2018. And as we finish up today and we have communion, guys, if y'all want to come down. As you take the, the juice and the crackers today, 
We ask that you hold it so we can partake as one body of Christ. Y'all remain seated. They're going to come and they're going to do, pass it like an offering plate. Saving some confusion, some time. But while we do this, I'd like everybody to ponder and think about what's one thing that, that we was afraid to do in 2017. One thing that we wanted to do, or we felt led to do or tempted to do for Christ that we didn't do. Something that we walked away from because we didn't have the strength. Or maybe it's the Lord telling us to do something and, and it was going to cost us. Thank you, brother. It's going to cost us financially. It was going to cost us time. You know, people say all the time, well, they'll quote that the Lord will never give you more than you can handle. I believe that is wrong, and I believe that scripture is misquoted. The Lord will never give us more than we can handle through Him. Because the Lord's going to give us more than we can handle physically our own selves because He wants us to rely on Him. If He gave us, never gave us anything more than what we can handle on our own, why would we need Him? But the idea is to break us, just as like those songs sang today. The idea is to break us down so He can build us back up in His strength. We all need to make the change. So I pray that 2018 is a year of change for each one of us. May it be a time of strengthening, whether it's physical, emotional. There's a hurt that needs healing. Maybe you've had a sickness in your family. As most of you all know, I lost my grandmother earlier this year. We were close growing up. But I thank the Lord for taking her home because she's no longer in pain. She's no longer struggling here on earth. So find that someone who's faced a loss or that's facing a loss. Every day we get uh, phone calls at church or on our cell phones or Facebook messages of somebody that's hurting because they have a family member that's sick or injured, hurt. Sometimes it's emotionally, sometimes it's physically. Sometimes there's addictions that are causing the pain and suffering within a family. But may we all make a change to try to make those folks a little bit stronger. Make a change in our own lives that shine Christ's light just a little bit stronger. So as we partake of communion today, Matthew 26, 26. If you've been here very long, you've heard us read this scripture every communion. And I believe we always will. As we do communion today, just remember, you don't have to be at church to do communion. You don't have to be a pastor to do communion. We highly recommend you do communion at home. If you're a father, do communion every now and again with just your family. We've done communion with folks in the hospital before. I believe there's healing power in taking communion. So as we partake today, keep these in mind and keep these prayers alive. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Amen. If your pastor comes to the center aisles, the guys will come by and pick them up. Y'all can be seated. But as we head out today... 
Keep in mind what change you can be. Michael, you guys want to come back up? Bringing around a new year brings a lot of uh, different emotions and different thoughts. And as you leave here today, I, I pray that you continue to seek for that change. Seek for that person that you can be a light to a little bit brighter. As we make a change in our own lives, be that change in somebody else's life. Reach out a little farther. Reach out a little stronger. Be that anchor for someone who needs an anchor to tie them down. Shine Jesus' light a little bit stronger than you did in 2017. Verse 30 behind that says, And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. So I pray that we all stand for prayer. We stand for one song. But like Jason's always said, there's freedom. If you need to leave, leave. If you need to stay, stay. If you need prayer, come down front. Find somebody next to you, beside you, behind you, across the church that you feel comfortable with. No pastor's prayers are heard more than anybody standing next to you. We all have the same lifeline to the Lord. But if you need prayer, don't leave here today. Don't leave out of here and, and bring in 2018 carrying the same baggage that you carried, the same hurt that you carry. Don't leave here today with the same hurts. Bring them to somebody. Help them. Allow them to help you lay them down at Jesus' feet. Dear Lord, we just come before you today. Lord, we pray that changes are coming, not only in our own lives, but Lord, within the church body itself. Lord, may you grow up warriors. May you grow up new preachers and teachers. May you grow up those that you want to lead this congregation. Grow up those that are better prepared to lead their families. Give us your strength, your courage to push through the hard times. May you give us each a goal or many goals to fight, to fight towards in 2018. May we all face our fears and make that change that draws closer to you each and every day. So Lord, as we leave here today, we pray that you keep everybody safe on the roads, headed to wherever they got to go. Lord, we pray those who couldn't be here today are blessed by spending time with their families. We pray your protection, your provision, and your mighty blessing as we ring in 2018 tonight. Watch over everybody who's out tonight. Lord, pray that they can make good decisions and that they bring glory and honor to you in all that we do. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, in the morning, when I rise, in the morning, when I In the morning, when I rise, give me Jesus, give me Jesus. Yeah.